Hey, this is Elijah with the Oxygen team. And in this video, we're gonna take a look at how to use the third-party library Isotope to filter and sort a repeater in Oxygen. As you can see here, Isotope creates this really nice smooth filtering effect. It also allows you to sort by certain data points as well. And you can learn more about Isotope over at isotope.metaphysy.co. I do want to point out that depending on your project, you may need to purchase a license for Isotope. So make sure to review their licensing terms as well before implementing this on your project. So now that we've seen what Isotope is and what it can do, let's close this out. We'll close out our little example here. And we're going to jump over to a page that looks just like that, but it has none of the Isotope functionality yet. So basically all I've set up is just the basic oxygen structure and design here. Now there are a couple pieces of groundwork we're going to have to lay to make this thing work. So first is we need to make sure that our repeater has a class of grid, which this one already does. We're not gonna use that for any styling, but we are gonna use that to tell Isotope that this repeater contains our sortable and filterable elements. Similarly, the repeater div needs to have a grid-item class, and this is gonna let us identify those when we start initializing Isotope. These over here, these filtering and sorting options are just oxygen buttons and we're gonna make some modifications to them later, but we do not need any classes on them. But in the actual repeater div itself, these elements like the title and the date, if we want them to be used for sorting, we should add a class to them to help us find them in the code. So we're gonna add a title to the post title uh, heading, and then for the date, we're going to add a date class. So those will be used later uh, for these sorting buttons over here to tell Isotope, hey, sort by the text value of the element with a title class or the element with a date class. So those are the basic classes that we need to have uh, to work with Isotope. Now we need to start adding some code. Now the tricky part about using Isotope with a repeater is that Isotope, when you're say filtering items down is gonna look for classes on those items to help it decide how to filter. So if we wanna filter these posts in this repeater by category, then these repeater divs need to have the given posts categories as classes. So we're gonna use a bit of PHP and JavaScript to make that happen. So let's go ahead and set that up first because that's really the most um, unintuitive part of this whole process. Uh, let's go ahead and add a code block. And we're gonna jump into the PHP and HTML editor, get rid of this echo. Now we need to set up a variable called categories. And that's gonna be a function, get the category. And then make sure we get the ID inside that so that we know we're grabbing the categories from the current post in the loop. Now we need to loop through these categories and we're gonna actually output them in the HTML so that we can grab them and use them in uh, JavaScript. So we're gonna do a for each categories as category. And this gives us that category variable to work with. And we're gonna echo a span with a class of category and the text content of that span needs to be the actual category slug. So we're going to do dollar sign category and then we'll access the slug property of that object and then close the span. Now, if we apply that and look on the front end, we will see that each of these posts has a number of uh, categories that are now output. And of course, they're not styled or anything because we're actually going to hide them. Uh, so we'll do that in just a minute. But the important part is we now have these spans that can identify the categories of the posts that they belong to. Now, let's create another code block. We're going to do this um, up here outside of anything else, just because when I have functionality that kind of governs an entire page, I like to put the code block at the top of the page. And we're gonna get rid of this uh, echo there. And then we're gonna go to JavaScript and let's go ahead and set up a jQuery document ready function. 
This is where we're going to do all of our JavaScript stuff and initialize isotope and all that. Uh, but for now, let's deal with these categories. So we're going to do um, a jQuery and we're going to find the category spans by class. So we add dot category. And then for each of those, we're going to run a function. And that function is going to be uh, jQuery, this, and then we want to find the parent element that has the grid item class. Uh, so we're going to say closest and then add that grid dash item class in there so that we now are going from the span up to the nearest containing element that has the grid item class. And then we're going to add a class to that grid item element. And the class we want to add is equal to jQuery this dot text dot to lower case. So that's going to take the text of that category span and add it as a class to the grid item that contains that span. So let's save that and we'll jump up on the front end. And if we right click and inspect our divs here, let's just take a look. So now you can see we have uh, not only the CT dash div dash block and grid item classes, but we also have classes equal to the categories that these posts have. So that's just, it's a little bit tricky, but um, it's really not terribly complicated. And that gives us the tools we need to use isotope with the repeater. Now uh, we can go in here and again, we're on our kind of main code block here. We're gonna go ahead and set the category class to display none because we don't need to see those elements. Uh, the other thing we can do if you want to kind of clean things up with uh, JavaScript is you can go in here and jQuery this remove and that will remove each span after its text has been added as a class. Now that's still going to leave behind the code block so it's not 100% clean but you can do it either way. You could also leave those spans visible and style them as badges or something you know if you wanted to. So there's that part. Now, what we need to do is we need to actually include isotope on this page, which we can do here in this code block. So we'll jump back over here to the uh, PHP and HTML editor, and we're going to paste in the CDN link, which you can get from isotope.metaphysy.co. And I've got it on my clipboard here, so I'm going to paste it in. Now we can go back to the JavaScript tab and initialize our actual isotope grid. So we're going to create a variable called grid, and that's going to equal jQuery. And then we're going to target the, uh, the repeater with that grid class that we added to it. And then we're going to initialize isotope on that. And then there's an array here of options that we can set up. And we only need uh, a few to start out with. So we're going to do item selector. This tells it which items it's kind of sorting and filtering, and that's going to be grid item. And then we need a layout mode, which is going to be fit rows. And then to make it possible to actually sort these elements, we need to add get sort data, which is going to be an array. And this is where we kind of tell it which items we want it to index within uh, these sortable elements. So we're going to do a title, and that's going to be equal to the title element, the element with the title class. And then date is going to be date. So now our isotope grid, if you will, is initialized. It has all the information it needs to actually work. Now we need to make it actually do something. So we need to implement the functionality for our buttons there on the left side. And the way we're going to do that is with data attributes. Since oxygen lets you add data attributes really easily in the builder, we're going to use that to our advantage. Uh, but first, uh, knowing that's how we're going to do it, we're going to go down here and go ahead and write our JavaScript. So when we click a filter button, we need to tell isotope to filter the elements. So we're going to do jQuery, and then we're going to select all elements with a data-filter attribute. And then when we click them, we're going to run a function. And the first thing we need to do in that function is do e.prevent default so that we don't actually follow any links or anything when we click those. Then we need to just take our grid variable that we set up up above, dot isotope, and then we're going to actually define another option in here. So it's going to be filter, and then the filter value we want to set is going to be jQuery this, the element we just clicked, dot data, 
which is uh, accesses the data attributes, and then filter. So then when we click one of those filtering buttons, it will actually filter the isotope elements based on the value of the data filter attribute on that button. So now we just need the data attributes on the buttons themselves. So let's start with um, all. So this one's kind of unique. We're gonna go to advanced attributes and data dash filter is gonna be da dot grid item because isotope is filtering these based on the classes, remember? So we need to make sure we have that dot in there when we're defining filtering uh, values. And grid item is a class that all these elements have, so we want the all button to just show everything that so we're using the grid item class. Now for the one button, we only want to show elements with the uh, one category or one class. So we do data filter and then dot one. And then we just repeat that step for the remainder. And we only have a few classes here, so we'll go ahead and set these up. And again, we're just adding the data-filter attribute with the class name that we want to filter these elements by. And we'll go on to the last one here. So this is four, add attribute, data-filter, and then dot four. Make sure you have that dot because if you don't, the filtering won't work. So let's go ahead and jump up here and refresh now that we've added some cool functionality. And we should now be able to sort these elements by these buttons. So now we're seeing only posts with a category of one, only posts with a category of two, three, four, so on and so forth. If we want to remove all filtering, we just go back to all and it goes back and shows all the grid items. Now we need to do basically the same thing for our sorting. So we want to be able to sort by title and date. And we already laid our groundwork in our code block by setting up this get sort data option. So all we need to do is basically copy this whole function here, move it on down, and we're gonna change data filter to data sort by, and then change this filter to sort by, and then change uh, this filter here to sort by. Okay, so now anything with a data dash sort by attributes gonna go ahead and sort this, uh, these results within this repeater by whatever their sort by value is. Same principle as the filtering option, uh, but now we need to go ahead and add our attributes to these. So we'll go to advanced attributes, add data dash sort by, and then on these you do not actually need the dot, uh, even though we are technically targeting elements by a class, isotope doesn't need the dot in these, so we're just gonna put title. And then on this one, we're gonna go to advanced attributes, add attribute, data, sort by, and then we're gonna do date, okay? So let's save that and jump to the front end. Now let's refresh and take a look at sorting. So we sort by date, which it's already sorted by date. By title, you can see it rearranges everything to alphabetical order, back to date, so on and so forth. So even though this involves some custom code, it's all fairly basic once you understand the principles that you need to apply. And with Isotope, you can achieve just these really cool, very kinetic sorting and filtering effects that are just really impressive. So again, this is Elijah with the Oxygen team, and that's how to implement Isotope sorting and filtering with a repeater element in Oxygen. Thank you very much for watching.